Hey, did you miss me? It has been a couple of weeks since we did our last self-publishing news segment. And of course I come on back and it's like, it went absolutely berserk. There is a lot of news coming out about AI. Uh, Victoria Strauss discovered, oh gosh, this platform that I've really not liked since day one. And uh, also KDP, they rolled out a new report dashboard and Dave Chess and the Kindlepreneur just unveiled a new keyword strategy that leverages categories in the same instance. And speaking of AI, oh my goodness, a lot of AI fallout and some stuff that's starting to roll out and some great advice from some experts. So you're going to want to make sure that you stay tuned to today's self-publishing news for October the 2nd of 2023. Learn how to publish books and build your author business with award-winning author and self-publishing consultant, Dale L. Roberts. This is the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast. I need to give a big shout out to our sponsors, the fine folks over at Dibley Create. Are you ready to create, harness human and machine intelligence for limited, limitless, use me, creativity, boosted productivity and authentic content with Dibley Create. Try Create Pro for seven days for free, or you can even just try the free program altogether. I love me some Dibley Create. It's actually been somewhere where I've been doing a ton of my projects and I plan to do a much more. Visit my affiliate link at dailinks.com slash Dibley Create. Let's jump into the very first news segment coming from the CBC. So this teenage novelist is $1,400 out of pocket to self-publisher, but still doesn't have a book. So let me give you the TLDR on this one. This young lady here wanted to publish a fantasy book and she found some US, US based self-publishing company and oh, well, she doesn't have a book right now. And that is a big problem, especially since she had invested 1400 bucks. So, um, let me see the name of the company. Uh, they were from Gander. Uh, so the name of the company was Premium Book Publishing, which is based in Florida. And the more that I start to see a lot of these vanity publishers doing things like this, the more I want to just shine a spotlight on this. So spread it far and wide that this young lady was taken for a ride, 14 years old. How could you possibly live with yourself taking $1,400 from this young lady? You are a piece of human trash. Take yourself out because nobody else wants it. So premium book publishing gets an F minus from me on this one right here. Read the piece a little bit more and you'll find out why I'm so upset about this because this young lady got to start out her self-publishing career on the worst note possible. Vanity publishers, if you ever have a publishing company that expects you to pay X amount of dollars up front to fulfill publishing and distribution, read the fine print. In instances like this one, what ended up happening is they said, oh, no, no, no. You bought the $1,400 package, but it was only for editing and cover design. She was like, I already did editing and cover design. Why are you charging me for this? I paid for this to get distribution for you to publish this. So please, folks, be careful out there. And if you know someone that is a young person who is really wanting to get in this business and you know a little bit about this business, help them out. Show them some of the best tools they can take and not have to spend that $1,400 on a service like this because that 14 year old, I can guarantee you could have done all the things that I can do and some. All right, I talked about Victoria Strauss and she is the author of Writer Beware, the writerbeware.blog to be exact. Cautions on Babel Cube, Barnes & Noble book order scams and audiobook order scam. I'm just gonna cover one of the platforms which is Babel Cube. They are the bane of my existence. If there's one platform I, I hate just about almost as much as ACX, it is Babelcube. They're essentially a matchmaking platform for foreign translation rights. And essentially they take 20% of all sales. And what they do is provide a marketplace of translators. And I'm gonna use a quotation mark on this because there's no vetting process. Literally, do you have a pulse? Well, guess what? You can be a translator. And there's no real vetting process. Their system is slow. It is absolutely wonky as heck. Uh, and in a lot of instances, you'll end up with a large volume of quick shoddy translations. I have been working like crazy to take any of the publications down that I made in an agreement 
let's see, or seven years ago on some of them, because it's how long you do the agreement for. And it's not just a simple case of like, let me just go ahead and just take it off the market. And that's that. No, Babel Cube's like, no, you, you sign an agreement. And unless you want to break that and go to court, you're stuck with this one. So I am so glad that Victoria Strauss shined a light over on Babel Cube. Folks, I don't often tell you don't do something unless it is absolutely detrimental. Don't go to Babel Cube. And if there's any one thing you do for Babel Cube, tell people to avoid it at all costs. Hire professional translators with an actual portfolio, distribute the work yourself, or just sell the translation rights on another platform of some sort. Avoid Babel Cube. That's all that to say that. Now, the Barnes & Noble side of things when it comes to what Victoria Strauss had shared is there's now people that are trying to impersonate Barnes & Noble and tell people, hey, if you send us $1,000, we'll give you 3,000 copies of your book free. And they got had. So folks, Barnes & Noble is not going to reach out to you like that. It just doesn't work that way. Let's move a little bit further forward. Of course, uh, if you want four reasons why you should not translate your books with Babel Cube, <laughs> we come back to this one. Sorry, I put this one out of order. Please go on over, read this article because they talk a little bit more about that. Um, very insightful. Double Face Traduzioni is the uh, site and you can go ahead and give that a read. All right, going a little further forward here, Ingram Spark just rolled out their September newsletter. I'm not sure why it's the September one, but they uh, did inform us that they are going to be extending their promo code for you, that's F-O-R-Y-O-U, for you to waive any of your upload fees. This is good until October the 30th. It must be in all caps, by the way, folks. So when you go to update or upload, excuse me, update a manuscript, Make sure that you use the for you to waive that update fee. Now, in the event that you're still in the first 60 days of publishing on Ingram Spark, you won't even need that. It's free updates until after that 60 days. So if you've been holding off because you don't have 25 bucks or you're just like, I don't want to spend that type of money. Now's the time to go ahead and take advantage of it. All right, let's go into the news of KDP because KDP just rolled out something right as I was getting ready to go on vacation. Go figure. And that is they just updated the KDP report dash. Here, I'm just going to big applause. And this is not me being, you know, sarcastic about time. They had done this new reports in beta, I don't know, a few years ago now. And that thing has been wonky. Every single time I would go into my reports dashboard, it would get timed out by my browser every single time. I wasn't able to see any of my earnings unless I went into the old dashboard and that takes a second, it gets in there and you got to kind of narrow it down. It was a pain in the butt. Now, mm, chef's kiss, it's beautiful. Big shout out to the KDP team for updating reports. It was much needed. You should have received an email from KDP on September 21st, letting you know about that. And as well, they actually have a survey link for you to take. Highly recommend, go in, go into reports, play around with it, see if you can kind of break it. If you break it, find out ways that you can kind of share that through the survey so they know what they need to fix. And speaking of KDP, oh man, I'll tell you, this was one I got to release just before I went on vacation the week before last where uh, Dave Chesson, the Kindlepreneur, and his team at Publisher Rocket discovered two category issues. One of them was duplicate categories, which isn't so bad in itself. And the other one was ghost categories. And ghost categories was where it's a category that you list yourself in, but it doesn't technically exist. And you would never get a bestseller tag for it, anything else like that. But in that process, he also revealed that there were specific single term keyword phrases that you could be able to use to increase the likelihood of your book being placed into a category. Because here's the thing, if you select the wrong keywords and you select the right categories, that will create a conflict. And at that point, KDP's automation says, oh, this doesn't go in this category. Let's reject them. So to increase your likelihood of being placed into a specific category, there are specific keywords. Now, the only way to know this is obviously if you get Publisher Rocket, but I'm not going to be a shill for him at this point. What I need you to do is go over and read his updated post on the seven Kindle keywords, use all 50 characters or not. And in this particular one, let me go ahead and just summarize one of the key points that he you know, mentions here is how do you fill those slots? Okay, so what he says is, Step one, find one to three keyword specific phrases. 
So these are going to be very relevant to your book. Think of them as the perfect descriptive phrase your target reader would type into Amazon when searching for your book. Step two, find one to two target specific, targeted specific categories. So for instance, this is one of those ones that if you choose a specific single term keyword by way of Publisher Rocket, you'll be able to increase the likelihood. So they say one to two inside that. And then last but not least, for the rest, fill in with niche specific terms and phrases. So fill it to the brim, all the way up, 50 characters or more. And that is going to really help you make the most of it. I'll probably do a deeper dive about this particular article and some of the theories that actually are rolling around eventually in due time here on this podcast. Moving a little further forward, the book business applauds government lawsuit against Amazon. Did you guys hear that the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, is now starting to clamp on down Amazon? Oh, yes. So from what they said, the Federal Trade uh, Trade Commission, supported by 17 state attorney general, uh, filed its long-awaited antitrust lawsuit against Amazon yesterday in a 172-page complaint. The government alleged that the e-tailer uses a set of interlocking anti-competitive and unfair strategies to illegally maintain its monopoly power. And so this brings up a lot of, and, and I've thought about this all vacation long. I thought about, okay, this goes through, and if the FTC does get what they want, could we finally be seeing some changes on KDP for the better? For me, I've always found it to be absolutely just infuriating that they force you to price your book between $2.99 and $9.99 to get 70% because anything outside of that, you get 35%. That sucks. That stinks in so many levels. I hated that since day one and I continue to hate it to this day. Love me some KDP, but that garbage ruling is just absolutely, you know, it just sucks. So to me, I think that forcing authors to go within that particular price range is, you know, an unfair strategy. And I hope that in this FTC filing that we see something happen in a positive direction for KDP. One could hope, right? And I wasn't done talking about AI at this point. Uh, the Alliance of Independent Authors, Dan Holloway, actually put out a great piece on submitting your views to the U.S. Copyright AI Consultation. So the USA Copyright Office is looking for your opinion on how you feel AI should work. So essentially, let me go ahead and just briefly read here what Dan said. The scope of the consultation includes the use of copyright material material in training data sets. It also includes how copyright should apply to works that have been generated using AI. Interestingly, it also covers an area that's new to the legislation le legislative framework, the imitation of style. This will apply to voices and performances as well as artwork and words. This is very timely given Amazon's new policy on AI, which allows AI generated work provided the use of AI is declared the protection afforded to any AI generated work you upload will depend on the outcome of this consultation. So very, very interesting. And while we're on the topic of AI, the written word media put out a great post on September 22nd, three ways writers can use AI without having it right for them. Yes, folks, I've been saying this for a while. AI is not all evil, okay? It is a great tool to be leveraged. You know, if you look at AI in the same way as Photoshop, Photoshop a lot of people thought it was evil when it first came out. Oh my gosh, this is going to just ruin graphic design. Oh my Lord. All these type of things. You know, the DSLR camera, you know, you can go over to like phones now and get the same kind of quality. Oh my gosh, that's the end of photography as we know it. No, it's not. If we leverage AI in a very smart, ethical way, it can actually be very useful. So here are three ways that they suggest to some of you out there that might be a little reluctant to embrace AI. You can use it for research. I do this quite a bit. I will research some things and it just is so much faster for me to go ahead and plug that into AI and figure out the research. And I usually have to go back and fact check some of that stuff. And then the other thing is for outlining. Believe it or not, that assistance really does help dial you in. If you happen to be the type of person that is, is a plotter, outlining is really, really nice. And considering that you're going to write everything else like that, whatever remains of that outline is not really proprietary because anybody can go and write off of that outline. And last but not least, getting unstuck. One of my favorite methods is to if I figure like, oh man, I've got this long sentence, it's too wordy, I can't figure out how to reword it, I just go ahead and highlight that thing and something like Pro Writing Aid fixes it for me. Or something like Kip over at Dibley Create 
rewrites it for me just like that. And it gets me unstuck so I can actually move a little further forward. Speaking of moving further forward, big shout out to Debbie Burke, longtime follower here of this channel. And Debbie actually sent me a piece previously, but she sent me another one. And of course, as you might know, it's about AI. You just found out your book was used to train AI. Now what? Now this is put out by Authors Guild and they go through a step-by-step -step system of figuring out if your book has been used to train AI and the actions you can take. So for instance, they say if your books are in the books three data set, or if any AI system has intimate knowledge of them, you can send a letter to AI companies telling that they do not have the right to use your books. We have created a form to make it easy for you to send this letter. Sign their open letter, take action to prevent future unauthorized use, support the Authors Guild, which I don't disagree with that, and stay informed. Now, um, I'm a big fan of the Alliance of Independent Authors, but if I were to go with any other company as well, Authors Guild is very, very reputable. So definitely you can always consider going and supporting them for sure. Alrighty, moving a little further forward here, actually a great video put out by my boy, Sean Dolwit. He's a former guest here of the channel. This changed Amazon KDP forever. Watch this 10 minute video because he mentions some of the recent changes. And one of the changes that he addresses is the fact that through Amazon FBA, they now have AI systems implemented in the dashboard for descriptions and titles and whatnot. So this is a kind of interesting step in the direction everybody's been kind of speculating, especially now that we're having to declare AI, generative AI for our books, whether it's through text or through visual aids or something like that. So this whole time they've been gathering some information from us Chances are very likely they're training their own AI systems. So who knows, maybe eventually we'll be able to use generative AI for our descriptions right within the KDP dashboard. But Sean goes a little bit more in depth about it. He shares behind the scenes about how it looks in the Amazon FBA dashboard. Highly recommend Sean's channel. He's always on the cutting edge of things and especially when it comes to artificial intelligence. Great guy, by the way. Highly recommend him. All right, uh, next one here. This is actually coming from the fine folks over at Book Brush. This is the Platinum Author Academy with Mel Jolly and Kevin Tumlinson. They're gonna teach you how to level up your author presence with podcasting. Now, if you happen to be a subscriber to Book Brush at the Platinum level, you'll be able to get admission to this. If you don't have Book Brush Platinum, that's okay. You can find out more details at bookbrush.com. I'm not an affiliate. You can go there. I love them. They're fantastic. Of course, I'll be there because I've got platinum status. This is on October the 4th at 2 p.m. We love to offer exclusive sessions with all three content for our platinum members. This quarter session will be with Kevin Tomlinson and Mel Jolly. Now, you may recognize Kevin. Kevin actually is a former guest here on this channel, and he's also the marketing director over at Drafted Digital. Swell guy, fantastic guy. Going a little further forward here, Lulu is going to be hosting a webinar here on the same day, same time, October the 4th at 12 p.m. This will be how to get more readers from Pinterest. This is going to be hosted by web, uh, by Lulu on this webinar. And the host also is going to be Kate All. Pinterest is a powerful search and discovery platform that can bring your new readers month over month, year after year. But it's important to just not just repurpose your other social media content on the platform, but use it in a strategic way. In this presentation, Kate All, owner and CEO of Simple Pen Media, will explain what sets Pinterest apart from other social platforms and share the five keys to making Pinterest work for you as an author. Very interesting. Go check it out, folks. And of course, I've gotten a uh, note here from the folks over at Crave Books. They're going to be hosting the Book Ninja Summit. Book Ninja Summit is actually going to be bringing together some of the biggest names in the industry to talk about book marketing. Uh, and a few of my friends are in this broadcast. It will include, I think, uh, Brian Meeks, uh, Michael Laron, Mark Leslie Lefebvre, so many more. This is not a free summit. It is about 50 bucks for lifetime access. It'll be on October the 7th. This is not an affiliate link. It's just a recommendation. You can always go check it out if you're very interested. There are great speakers, so I think you're in great hands. And folks, I am starting up the writing sprints again every Saturday at 12.15 p.m. Eastern daytime. So make sure that you come on over and join me for one of these broadcasts. It's always fun. You know, you can always come and watch me write my stuff. Literally, you can see the exact words as I type them on out. 
You can join me on there on this Saturday at 12, 15 p.m. Eastern Daytime. And last but not least, it is less than 16 hours left for the Miblart Premium Cover Design Package giveaway worth $700. Go on over, visit dailinks.com slash giveaway, folks. Last I saw it before I went on vacation, there wasn't even 200 entrants yet. Yeah, your likelihood of winning this are pretty high here. And I would tell you to enter daily, but at this point, you only got one more day to go. And if you do enter, please, please remember to validate your first entry. There's actually going to be a confirmation that comes in from the King Sumo giveaway hosts. So if you see something from King Sumo, it's safe. It's fine. Check your spam folder. If you don't see it, as soon as you do the entry, because you have to validate it, it's the way that King Sumo kicks out any of the bots. We don't want bots to win the, the prizes. So that was the news for self-publishing this week. What did you think about some of those items? Was there anything that I particularly missed? It, I could have very well missed it. Deb, share with me over inside the Discord community at dalelinks.com slash Discord. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I'll catch you next week. You've been listening to the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingwithdale.com for more information on how you can level up your self-publishing business. Also, check out our growing video on demand service, chock full of free and premium content, when you head over to theselfpublishinghub.com. If you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a review on your preferred podcasting platform. We thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next episode.